Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about dynamic programming and why it's so awesome. So let's get started. So dynamic programming is a problem solving approach in which we compute and store the results of simpler subproblems in order to build up the solution to a complex problem. Now there are two ways to implement dynamic programming. We can use either memoization or we can use tabulation. And we will talk about both of these techniques in detail later in this video. Now here is a link to a question on Stack Exchange which tells the story behind how it got named as dynamic programming but actually there is nothing dynamic about dynamic programming. Now any problem that can be solved using dynamic programming will have two characteristics. One is optimal substructure and the other one is overlapping subproblems. So let's first talk about optimal substructure. So optimal substructure means that we can find the optimal solutions to the subproblems and then using the results of the subproblems we can find the solution to the actual problem that was given to us. For example in this case we have to find the shortest path from A to C. Now there is a point B between A and C. So to find the shortest path from A to C we will first find the shortest path for two subproblems. So one of the subproblem will be to find the shortest path from A to B and the other subproblem will be to find the shortest path from B to C. Once we have the result to both of the subproblems, we can combine the result of subproblems to get the solution to the actual problem which was to find the shortest path from A to C. So the shortest path from A to B is 12 km and the shortest path from B to C is 18 km. So the shortest path from A to C will be 12 plus 18 which is 30 km. So the problem of finding the shortest path from A to C have the optimal substructure property. Now let's talk about overlapping subproblems. We will take Fibonacci series as an example and we know that in Fibonacci series the next number is the sum of previous two numbers. Now numbers at index 0 and 1 are the base cases. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and 8 plus 13 is 21, and so on. And here we have the recursive implementation, which will return us the number at index n in the Fibonacci series. Now the problem with the recursive approach is that it calculates the same subproblems again and again. For example, to find the number at index 6 in the Fibonacci series, we need to know the number at index 5 and number at index 4. So F6 will call F5 and F4. Then F5 will call F4 again and F3. So finding the number at index n in the Fibonacci series have overlapping subproblems property. And in this approach, we are calculating the same subproblems multiple times. For example, we are calculating F4 here and we are calculating F4 here again. Similarly, we are calculating F3 here and we are calculating F3 here again. Now let's execute the code and see the result. So we have added a print statement so that we can log the call that was made to the function and we are incrementing the calls. So every time the function will be called, calls will be incremented by 1 and we are also logging the time it took to calculate the Fibonacci number. So we are going to calculate the Fibonacci number at index 6 which will be 8. So let's execute the code. So the Fibonacci number at index 6 will be 8 and in total 25 calls were made and it took around 1 millisecond. Now if you sum all these calls, the total number of calls will be 25. Now let's calculate the Fibonacci number at index 25. So the Fibonacci number at index 25 will be this and more than 2,42,000 calls were made and it took us nearly 3 seconds to calculate this. Now let's calculate the Fibonacci number at index 26. So the Fibonacci number at index 26 will be this and more than 3,92,000 calls were made and it took us nearly 5 seconds to calculate this. So we just changed the number by 1 from 25 to 26 
but the number of calls that were made incremented exponentially from 2 lakhs 42,000 to 3 lakhs 92,000. Now for the recursive approach we can write the recurrence relation like this. So to calculate the Fibonacci number at index n, we calculate the Fibonacci number at index n minus 1 and the Fibonacci number at index n minus 2 and plus 1 because we sum those two numbers. And if we take the upper bound, we can write it as 2 into t n minus 1 plus 1. And if we further solve it, we will see that the recursive implementation have runtime complexity of big O of 2 raised to power n. And big O of 2 raised to power n is horrible because it increases exponentially. Now let's see how we can use dynamic programming to calculate the Fibonacci number very fast. So we have two techniques to implement dynamic programming. Both the techniques cache the results of the previously computed subproblems. So we can use either memoization or we can use tabulation. So in memoization, we cache the results of the previously computed subproblems. Now tabulation is also very similar to memoization, but in tabulation, we don't use recursion and we fill the cache iteratively using loops. So let's first see the memoization approach. Now in the memoized version, we are using a map as a cache. We could have used an array rather than using a map. Now the main difference is this. So before we calculate the Fibonacci number at index n, we first check whether it's already there in the cache. And if it's already there, we return the number. Otherwise, we calculate the Fibonacci number at index n minus 1. And we calculate the Fibonacci number at index n minus 2. And we put those two numbers into the cache. Then we calculate the sum of these two numbers and we put that number into the cache. So next time when we need the result of these subproblems, we don't need to recalculate it again and we will get it uh, from the cache. Now let's execute this code to find the Fibonacci number at index 6. So the Fibonacci number at index 6 is 8 and the total number of calls that were made was 11 and it took us uh, nearly 2 milliseconds to calculate that. Now, if you remember in the naive recursive implementation, the total number of calls that were made to calculate the Fibonacci number at index 6 was 25, but in the memoized version, the total number of calls were just 11. So this will be our first call, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth, then sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Now we, we will have F2 already in the cache, so we don't need to make these two calls then this will be our 10th call. Now we already have F3 calculated, so it will be in the cache. So we don't need to make these four calls. Then this will be our 11th call. Since we already have F4 calculated and it will be in the cache, so we don't need to make these eight calls. So the memoized version is better than the naive recursive implementation. Now let's run the memoized version to find the Fibonacci number at index 26. So the Fibonacci number at index 26 will be this and the total number of calls that were made was 51 and we were able to find that in 2 milliseconds. Now if you remember in the naive recursive implementation we made more than 3,92,000 calls and it took us more than 4 seconds in that case. So the memoized version is much better than the naive recursive implementation. Now let's see the tabulation technique. So in tabulation we don't use recursion. So we first put the value of base cases into the cache and then we use a loop to put the remaining values in the cache starting from i is equal to 2 till n and finally we return the value from the cache. Now let's execute this code to find the Fibonacci number at index 26. So the Fibonacci number at index 26 will be this and it took us almost 0 millisecond to calculate this. Now memoization is called the top down approach because to calculate F6 we call F5 then F5 calls F4 then F4 calls F3 and F3 calls F2 so we are coming from top to down that's why memoization is called the top down approach while in tabulation we fill the cache from bottom so in our example we started from i is equal to 2 and we go to higher numbers till n so that's why tabulation is called the bottom up approach. So the DP version of finding the Fibonacci number at index n have runtime complexity of big O of n 
which is a huge improvement over the naive recursive implementation which have the runtime complexity of big O of 2 raised to power n. Now let's talk about whether we should use tabulation or memoization. So if the original problem requires all subproblems to be solved, then tabulation outperforms memoization because tabulation does not have overhead for recursion. But if only some of the subproblems need to be solved for solving the original problem, then memoization is preferable since subproblems are solved lazily. So only the computations which are needed will be carried out. But in dynamic programming, we almost always use tabulation. Now, finally, let's talk about the difference between dynamic programming and divide and conquer approach. So dynamic programming is similar to divide and conquer approach in that the solution of a large problem depends on previously obtained solution to easier subproblems. But the significant difference is that in dynamic programming, subproblems overlap. By overlap, we mean that the result of a subproblem can be used in the solution of two other different subproblems. For example, result of F4 can be used in both while calculating F5 and while calculating F6. So the subproblems overlap. But in divide and conquer approach, each subproblem is different. Subproblems do not overlap. Since every time we will be solving a different subproblem, caching the value of a subproblem doesn't make sense. You can get the code from here.